My name is Daryl Nelson. I'm a blacksmith. Started blacksmithing when I was 19 years old. There's a lot to a hammer blow. If a hammer blow is done incorrectly, you don't get many results at all. Accuracy counts. Accuracy actually counts more than, than how powerful the blow is because if a powerful blow in the wrong place does more damage than good. When you see an accomplished smith working a piece of steel, it looks so easy because anything looks easy when it's demonstrated by an expert. You create things that will long outlast you, useful things that will accomplish hard jobs, and you get to use fire as a tool. Quench it in the water and you get a big hiss from the water. And cloud of steam and you just want to heat it back up and do it all over again. I made a ram's head, timberline version. This is ram's head number 17,536. After all these years I'm overwhelmed by the lodge the grandeur and the, and the effort that went into it. The first time I entered into the lodge, I could not believe that there was something like that in the Northwest that I didn't know about. Humbly. The first time I went there, it felt like it gave me a, a purpose. And I can tell you that blacksmiths from other countries International Smiths, Timberline Ironwork is what they're interested in because it's different. The rest of the ironwork in the country, you can see most anywhere, but Timberline Ironwork is Timberline Ironwork. There's nothing else like it anywhere in the country or the world. It's a style all of its own. The guidelines for Cascadian style design is that the motifs need to relate to local flora and fauna, Native American and pioneer themes. Knowing that, you see it throughout the lodge. Not to mention the fact that you've got to take into consideration the conditions under which the lodge was built, you know, the Great Depression, all these skilled craftsmen out of work. They gave their hearts and their souls when they did that work. They were so appreciative to have the work and I think they had a point to prove. The lodge is always an ongoing project. There's always something to be added or replaced at the lodge. It's supposed to be a nut on there. Apparently the nut came loose enough that somebody was able to put it in their pocket for a souvenir. Happens pretty regular up here. A lot of times that replacing means making a fastener to replace it with. Gotta go get a wrench and tighten it down a little bit more than with my fingers so that it doesn't go away again. This one over here needs help. We noticed the other day is getting loosey and saggy. And you can see right, that I the see maintenance replaced, replaced the it. When are you gonna get it done? No. <laughs> well, now that he knows Daryl's been great, he does a turnaround of you know a month or two, and then we walk around the lodge and figure out what else we need to get fixed. It's a cycle. There's big jobs up there, but in between the big jobs, there's just a lot of maintenance and tedious little things. Things break. Sometimes you gotta drop everything you're doing and come to the lodge and climb on a snow cat and go up in a blizzard and fix the door. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. Apparently there's people out there who just think that that would be a terrible way to spend their day. I can't think of a better way myself, so. So which one of these latches is the worst? Are you talking the windows? Yeah. That one right there. All right. When you make something as a blacksmith, you think that it's going to well outlast you. It's your little form of immortality, but in an environment like this, 
You can make short work of something you thought should last centuries. That's just time and wear. Everything wears out with time. Uh, nothing lasts forever. I can't think of a better way of spending my day than fighting with a window latch while looking out that same said window at the mountain, listening to the wind, snow drifting in through the crack in the window as I'm working. How could you not want to spend your day that way? What it looked like when I first saw it, it was just a shell of a building that had obviously seen a lot of hard winters. All the glass was missing from all the windows. Big open fireplace that wasn't a good heat source, so we put in an insert. All the furnishings have ironwork on them. Chairs, tables, handrails down the staircases, door hardware, lighting. It'll be seen by somebody. And that somebody deserves to see something nice back here. And say, look at that, they cared enough to put something nice hidden back here in the corner. Take a lot of pride in that. Truth of the matter is we do this for the building more so than the people. A lot of respect for this building. The people that put their heart and souls into it in the first place. For safety reasons, they needed to add handrails to the staircase. When the lodge was built, there was no handrails. So we put the installation off till October, which is one of their slowest months, and we did it after hours. And we'd planned it almost too good because we were already up three flights and nobody had come up the stairs yet, and we were kind of anxious to see if people were actually going to use these handrails. Finally, we were on the third flight and we heard some people coming up the staircase. So we peered over the edge. There was a fellow leading the way and grabbed right a hold of the handrail and used it all the way up. And we said, wow, look at these pine cones. Look at these twists. Boy, they don't make work like this anymore. <laughs> we could not believe our good luck <laughs> of the best compliment in the world that we had just been paid. A lot of it's respect for the Smiths that did the work in the first place, and the devotion that they put into it, and the care, and it just it deserves respect and devotion back. I try to do work that would make them proud as well. So that's the compliment I always hope for, is people thinking that something I just put in has been there since the day they opened the lodge.